Hi everyone. Um, this paper was presented at London School of Economics' recent Sonic Rebellions conference. Uh, it's called UK Honours and Imperial March, Empire Bought Activism in British Popular Music. This paper takes the position uh, that people who have been described as trailblazers could also be described as activists. In so, I argue if singer-songwriters and musicians of colour uh, though largely focusing on black people in this in this case, who have been positioned uh, in this way can or should take empire medals when they should have when they sh when they have in fact sorry when they have for in lack of a better term um, or description uh, fought or spent large years of their lives long years of their lives uh, fighting against racism and other forms of violence in popular music uh, to then in fact. Uh, pave the way for future generations. So are these are these two things opposites, effectively? My honours, I refer to the yearly awards given by British the British state uh, for merited work. Uh, for merited work, MBEs, OBEs, etc, etc. I also plot this paper in reflection of 2020's so-called perfect storm of Black Lives Matter and the COVID-19 pandemic where many received state honours for their work against inequality. Uh, we are reminded here by Dr. Ruby Zelzer, and she says, if any conversation about these empire things deliberately excludes or plays down how those things en enable power, influence and access, please know it is a lie. Sewell, uh, so Tony Sewell, she's talking about here, uh, Baroness Moyo, and also um, space scientist, uh, uh, Maggie Adam and Pocock are a reminder to you. Black feminist author, a, uh, author and activist Shardine Taylor Stone uh, further tweeted earlier on in 2021 about the cognitive dissonance to, to, it takes to take honours while also talking about racism and other forms of inequality and violence. Um, I'll bring you to the next slide here. So, um, Furthermore, the Sewell report that was enabled by people like Tony Sewell, uh, who was made a lord uh, for his efforts, take that as you will, uh, further to also um, Dr. Maggie Adam and Pocock, who was given, made, given a damehood for, him, for, for her involvement as well, um, who already had an MBE. In 2024, she was also made a dame, uh, which, uh, which basically adds fuel to the fire in that sense. Um, in that case, I would also implicate people like David Olasoga and Bernadine Evaristo to this growing long list of black people who have the three letters after their name, um, who in different contexts have also um, showed themselves up on social media. Um, I can think back to the Black Lives Matter protests where um, Evaristo was on Twitter, time policing activists, um, around their uh, around their rejection of of an empire award, um, Olasoga as well. The the when he was given a prime time slot on for the uh, coronation as well, and he was challenged. He was challenged around that. There was a whole thing around that, and I'll I'll put my essay to the film to the film analysis film analysis I did about honors um, in the description in uh, to this video too. Um, um, in 2021, calls to end the genocide in Gaza came to a peak in in the summer, in that summer, so three summers ago, uh, repeating more recently in 2023 and 24. Accepting an honour is also to legitimise the illegal state of Israel's genocide of Palestinians, further to, to, furthermore to genocides happening in um, countries like Congo as well and others around the world. Racist white people are no longer the only problem of Black Britain, but people that look like us doing the bidding of empire, uh, from Black MPs, um, certain Black MPs, to some uh, Black senior leaders that enjoy being the only Black person in management or in the room. While awardees like musicians make empire honours about themselves, activist work, like the practice of listening to music itself, it's not really an individual endeavour, but it's better done when with collectives and communities. 
it's recognition from demons in truth. Black assimilation into the empire award system comes to show that while the establishment was once white, integrationist fantasies have become a reality that has made the establishment many shades of black and brown as well. Every year, singers, lyricists, and musicians are awarded with Empire Awards for their contributions. For example, British rapper uh, Miss Dynamite became a member of the British Empire in 2018. Um, writing an opinion editorial for The Guardian, she writes, So, as I sat torn over my decision, it became clear and very simple. I would accept the MBE not because I want to be part of the establishment or had suddenly stopped caring about the damaging legacy of empire and colonialism or that it was suddenly all okay, but, but, uh, but because I wanted to honor my grandparents and all of their generation and the, extraordinary, and the extraordinary sacrifices they made. Okay. Um, I think Ms. Dynamite is right in that context, actually. So, but hear me out. Um, and this would be seen as that MBEs and OBEs for many of that generation that she's talking about uh, would be seen as an honor to them. However, for many of that generation, I find um, some of their politics flawed. Um, and it's because for a lot of them, I think it's entrenched in trauma as well. You can see the grief etched across their faces, including from police violence and historic racism experienced um, when they were younger in hospitals and in education. Sometimes our parents and our grandparents are not in the great, in the best position to help us. It is in what it is in what Bob Marley said or talked about as mental slavery, and in many ways we as the descendants need to do a bit better than our parents and our grandparents did. Um, not for any fault of their own, for being colonised in the first place. Um, radical psychologist Ghislaine Kinwani further writes, although respectability and assimilation may provide temporary escape and possible material gain and con conditional access to structures of power, they produce white supremacy and such breed further shame and alienation. Self-contempt, disdain and scorn were not merely accidental byproducts of colonialism, they were manufactured deliberate colonial weapons to fortify whiteness and reduce resistance. So you can you can see what's happening here. Um, people like Craig David, MIA, Dizzy Rascal, Danny K, Shade, Miss Dynamite, and Beverly Knight follow Billy Ocean and Aswad frontman Brinsley Ford in the collecting of an Empire Medal. Aswad were, were part of an were part of the roots reggae culture or movement that took Britain by storm from the late 70s. In fact, he was the lead, he was the lead of the 1980 film Babylon, which talked about the racism black men experienced from police and others within the sound system culture. Come an MBE then flies in the face of that. But I suppose people can change. Soul to Soul's Jazzy B was made an OBE in 2008 after growing up around the anti-system roots reggae culture. In 2020, Craig David was made a member of the British Empire for services to music, while in 2022, he got interested in eco-activism, particularly sustainability, releasing the track Better Days, I Came By Train, to spotlight how people can make more sustainable choices. Yet how can you do eco-activism or having an MBE? There is no climate crisis without racism. A lot of Dizzy Rascal's earlier music could also be, act could be described as activist, um, since it talks about racism and classism, uh, bringing his own personal experiences in. Similarly, Miss Dynamite's music has also discussed uh, racism and also growing up working class, um, who then takes an MBE to honor the Windrush, Billy Ocean identifies as Rastafarian, according to his Wikipedia page. Um, I see Rastafarianism and empire as opposites. At a given point, to have locks on your head meant that you came with a high level of consciousness or political consciousness that was anti-system, anti-establishment, where the state saw you first and foremost as a problem. 
in Jamaica, they were often homeless, shamed, ostracized, falsely criminalized, demonized in media and popular culture, beaten um, and falsely arrested. Rastafarians were kicked out by families and considered the bottom of the barrel of society and had to be fight to be counted. And if you want a, con a further context for that, I suggest you um, look at the lecture I did about the Mata Fankantu youth movement, uh, which I will link in the description um, of this video as well. Um, and also in the in the corner of the page as well. Um, traditionally, they lived with nature, so to do so with relatively few possessions, and they just and despised by the system Babylon. This is why the establishment hated them. So Jazzy B, Brinsley Ford, Billy Ocean, um, whilst it is a personal choice, taking honors flies in the face of what Rastafarianism originally meant. So on one side, you have black musicians and songwriters and people in the industry um, living or acting in ways that challenge it, that challenges, but then they make decisions to the opposite. Rastas were the activists. Or to put it another way, historian Carolyn Cooper further says, um, you take human beings and you try to turn them into objects. People resist. Jamaica's one of the countries in the Caribbean that had the most slave rebellions. So it was a constant fight. Well, Rastafari became in the early 20th century a manifestation of this spirit of resistance. In this way, you then begin to think of it. Is it possible for black musicians and singer-songwriters to authentically speak truth against power? When in fact, social status helps to get them work. To put it clinically, while the ethics of honours may be dirty, accepting one also gives awardees greater access to money jobs and the market, aka what um, Dr. Ruby Zelzer was saying earlier in her Twitter post about access, access to things. So can musicians ever truly be activists unless they cut ties from the system wholesale? Um, I know for leaders of charities, for example, who accept, it's, it can be as if their funding troubles or, or the road to get funding uh, becomes a bit easier when you suddenly have an MBE or an OBE in your email footer. Um, Nina, Nina Simone father says, um, said in 1968, it's difficult to retain your standards with the pressure of trying to make money, which always has its rules. It's hard to walk the tightrope of doing what you think is best and making money at it. I have to constantly re-identify myself to myself, regardless of my own standards, my, uh, sorry, myself, reactivate my own standards, my own convictions about what I'm doing and what. So she is talking about an American and a US context of, I guess, working within capitalism. I think what she's talking about is transferable um, to British context of MBEs, OBs, the honor system, and what those awards give you in terms of access to the market, et cetera, et cetera. And when it comes down to it, everyone is just trying to live and get by. That is the condition that capitalism has done, especially in a more individualist society. The singer songwriters and musicians rely on gig culture and being viewed as respectable, so respectability politics as well. The status that empire medals bring, regardless of the ethics, can help some people. Um, in 2020, British rapper MIA became a member of the most excellent order, so called excellent order, of the British Empire for contributions to music. She accepted it for her mother, making it about the self, so the individual and not the collective, which actually runs opposite to a lot of her music. She is known for her protest songs like Bucky Gone, Don Gun, Pull Up The People, Borders and Galang, which I'll try to link either in the video, in the, in the, um, in the corner here, or put, I'll put it in the description. Um, and she was often criticized that her political views were overshadowed uh, by her music. Sorry, her political views overshadowed her music. She has criticised international borders and supports whistleblowers like Edward Snowden. Um, so I still struggle to see how someone like her with her background and her political leanings um, could take an MBE. Um, I'm pretty sure she also campaigned for Corbyn when he was doing his um, 
when he was running for prime minister up to, I think, 2019. Um, similarly, British rapper Lady Leisha, who's someone whose music I love a lot, took a British Empire medal, um, so a BEM, in 2020, while at the same time she has talked about how black women in society are unprotected. So you've got to ask why are black women unprotected? It's these legacy, it's these colonial legacies of racism, white supremacy, and what we now call misogynoir. So the that compound term between misogyny um, and noir. So misogyny meaning the hatred of women, um, and noir being the French word for black, hence misogynoir, originally coined by black American academic Moya Bailey, I think it was 2008. Um, so black women being the least protected, yet at the same time, British Empire medal. It, it doesn't marry up, in my opinion. Um, so this is where aligning ourselves in proximity to whiteness has gotten us, where integration into empire is being celebrated. To put it another way, Dr. Ruha Benjamin says in her speech on sisterhood, black faces in high places are not gonna save us. Our blackness and our womanness are not of themselves trustworthy if we allow ourselves to be conscripted into positions of power maintain the oppressive status quo. Um, Stormzy follows in that trajectory. He is not an Empire Medal recipient, but the way he aligns himself with Oxbridge, so the Stormzy Cambridge scholarships, is the next best thing, in my opinion. My question is, what evidence is there that Oxbridge is good for black students? What I must also ask is, why do black people, or some black people, I should say, want everything or access to everything white people have. Um, not everything that white people have is good for us. Um, Oxbridge is some of the most toxic places for black students, but it seems that black people in many spaces uh, want to be included everywhere. League tables is not everything, an old colonial tool that measures excellence on metrics made by white supremacy. The English version of the American dream is a legacy of colonial thinking, slave mentality, where people like Stormzy and those honours recipients may not may not understand those benefits are not really for us. Um, sold a dream, just like our parents and our grandparents before them, um, going back to the days of pillage and plunder and colonial and colonialism, honours and otherwise whiteness as a symbolic gesture. Is not something that has uh, that's been effectively explored um, uh, in disciplines like sociology, politics, or even the arts. But this is a practice that continues to extract the work of well-meaning creatives um, that talk about equality issues of their progressive or, I guess, dare I say, radical potential. Today, many creatives continue to line up for their gong that empire honor uh, when there is space to say no. Uh, my earlier paper that I did for the anti-capitalist zine, The Commoner, looked at this in a context of film and television and the cognitive dissonance it takes to accept an empire medal for many black creatives while making anti-racism content. Pretty much anyone that is offered an MBE or an OBE, et cetera, et cetera, probably isn't that radical anyway. The way the music industry has become part of the status quo is quite challenging. In many ways, um, I find the musicians and singers of the 70s and 80s, especially in reggae music and punk, were also more critical of the systems they lived in. So who are today as radical musicians and singer-songwriters? I'm, I'm not really sure I could name that many working in the mainstream context like this. If we're talking about underground music, that's another question entirely. Um, by 1977, the punks had embraced Roots Reggae. In the documentary Roots Reggae Rebellion, again, which I'll either link in the video or in the description, um, Dr. Michael Riley, who was once in the band Steel Pulse, talks about how punks, to his surprise, understood black struggle. He says they did understand equality, so equally disenfranchised from the system, started to quote Babylon this and Babylon that in the same way. And then you go, what do you know about Babylon? They would give you lock, stock and barrel of how they were disconnected and they're fighting the system. 
he says. While bands like the Ruts and Steel Pulse sang about Babylon burning, I find now many musicians that may well have been once against the system have become absorbed into it or a part of it. Rastafarians and sound men in Britain being a key marker of how the honor system has absorbed many into it. I can never imagine Bob Marley um, in the 70s accepting an empire honor. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. But Babylon today is now white, black, and brown. It's incredibly scary to think about. Um, and that was my paper that I did delivered at um, LSE's uh, Sonic Rebellions meet um, this month. Um, hopefully it gave you something to think about. And if you like this sort of video, give me a, leave a comment. And if you've got questions, also just write whatever in the comments as well. But um, thanks very much for listening.